G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, just further to my last video where I hooked up a 250 watt solar panel to my EcoFlow River Pro, which is recommended to have a maximum of 200 watt for a panel connected. It worked perfectly okay. And basically I managed to feed in 197 watts of power into this unit which has got a 200 watt maximum input now from what i can gather uh, people that have over paneled this unit on an amperage basis have never got past 197 so it looks like the, the 200 watts figure is unattainable and it actually peaks out at 197 now the amperage side is not an issue because any it'll only take what it can use as far as amperage goes so any extra amperage will just get disregarded or dumped or something it'll, it's not going to worry it has no effect on the unit voltage is a different kettle of fish it's a different matter now the, the maximum voltage that the manual that came with this recommends for dc input through the xt60 port is 24 volts when you look online, there's a PDF from EcoFlow that says 25 volts. When I was dumping from that panel in the last video, a 250 watt panel, I measured the voltage and the voltage was 25.3 something. So it was clearly more than 25. So that means there must be some sort of a margin, an error margin, that goes beyond the 25 volts. So what is it? Well, I know what it is, but I'll show you for your own information if you are looking at using a non-standard panel, the same as I've done, and you're close to the uh, the overload point, so we say the, the port shutdown point. Now, these ports are software-driven. There's no, As far as I'm aware, there's no firmware, a hardware relay in there. So basically, in the manual it says if you go beyond the, the recommended input voltage you could damage the unit. That is true, but they normally give you a 30 to 50 percent um, safety margin as far as the tolerance that the electronic circuitry can handle before you get meltdown. In other words, if you were to say hook up 100 volts over the limit where you could expect some serious damage but if you were to say only get, hook up, in this case, say 40 volts, I would expect it would, it would handle that okay. It would just close the port. There wouldn't be any physical damage to the unit. Now that's just going on my experience. What the unit can actually take, I can't say. But I can show you the, the point at which you should be cautious and point out you should be measuring your voltage of your panel before you connect it if it's close to the to the tripping point okay but anyway for now we'll just demonstrate what the actual tripping point actually is and it's not it's not 25 volts okay now the port sensors when you plug in the cable and it determines whether or not it'll allow the DC to go in we're putting out 25.5 volts at the moment so I'll plug it in and the unit should recognize it which it has done so 25.5 volts is not a problem we'll go to 26 now okay we're at 26 there you go so it's taking 26 volts no problem so that's not the tripping point. Okay, 26.01. No problem. Now we go to 26.02. No problem. 26.03.
no joy so that's your upper limit so the upper limit is 26.02 volts anything over that 26.03 onwards the port will not open and that's basically the figure you should be working towards if you've got panels which are very close to the maximum uh, size for this unit remember that as panels heat up during the day so the voltage will drop so say you connect, try to connect a panel in the morning and the voltage is too high basically as if you leave the panel in the sun and it heats up then try again you'll find that uh, it's quite likely that the panel will feed in provided you're only just slightly over the the maximum so have a read up on that how heat affects panel performance uh, all panels are rated at 25 degrees centigrade and which is your sort of average temperature I suppose uh, where people are out and about so anyway I hope you found this useful and yeah interesting thing but something you need to know okay see you next time cheers